Hello everybody and welcome to the T3 Handicapping YouTube channel. I am Chris from T3 Handicapping and I'm here to take you through the full card analysis of Aqueduct on 12-17, that's uh, December the 17th, Friday, um, from the Big A. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's jump into it. Uh, first of all, if you are new here, there's a lot of ways to connect with us. You can find uh, all of our picks, t3handicapping.weebly.com. We have access to tons of tracks. You get your first day totally free. So uh, take that first day free pass. we get you access to uh, our full list of tracks. We've got a number of tracks going today. I think we might have six going on uh, Friday and then uh, another five or six going on Saturday as well. Um, so definitely lots of places that you can uh, that you can play from. So um, if you're new, uh, that's our website. That's where you can find everything. Our 30 day subscription is just $10. So um, you definitely get plenty for your money compared to a lot of other services. Uh, so you can find all of our information there. Uh, you can obviously find us here on YouTube. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe, uh, and that will make sure that you uh, get uh, notifications when new videos come out. We post these pretty regularly, especially over the weekend when I know most people are firing away. Uh, Facebook, you can find us, T3 Handicapping. Uh, horse racing, and then you can also find us on Twitter at handicapping t3. Uh, I will encourage you, especially, to go join that Facebook page, like us, and follow us there, um, so that you can uh, get exclusive content. There are days where I'll put exclusive content just there in the Facebook for you, um, so that members can see that. So, lots of different ways to follow us. Again, if you're new, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoy the content here, and I hope we can. Uh, help you win some money. If you're a returner, thank you for your continued support of T3 Handicapping. Let's jump into Friday's card uh, at the Big A. I'm going to do this the same way uh, if you watched yesterday's video, kind of did things a little bit differently. I'm going to do a very similar setup today. Um, so here you can see this is our Aqueduct pick sheet. This is the first sheet that you will see. If you have access to the members portal, you will get a much more in-depth look. You'll get access to all of these pace diagrams uh, or these uh, race summaries with total rankings, which are reflected on the pick sheet at the top. You'll get class level, distance, um, you'll get pace projectors, you'll get uh, run profiles that have been successful, you'll get the top five horse in every category, as well as our old T3 grid, which uh, is where this whole thing started, tic-tac-toe, three in a row, that's how you play your exotics. So 10, 8, 5 try box would be uh, a potential try that you could play in the first race at Aqueduct. But today we're just going to use this um, because I'm going to be really focused on the doubles. Uh, I mentioned yesterday I've been using a lot of weighted doubles to try and make the most of my wagering dollars and have been pretty successful. Yesterday was a tough day. I was close on a bunch of things. Um, ended up still being down a little bit for the day, but because I hit the last two doubles, was able to to scrap together something. It's just they were kind of short payouts, so um, didn't help the, the overall profitability, but at least got us a little closer to even, which means that we can uh, continue firing away on another day. Uh, just a couple things with Aqueduct. This has been one of our most successful tracks. You can see that our number one selection, so if you were to just play these top horses, so 10, 1, 3, 7, 4, 8, 2, 1, 9, we would expect that those horses would win about 33% of the time based on past performance. We've looked at uh, over 100 races from Aqueduct, and we've hit our top play has won 33% uh, of the time, which is about the same as favorites, uh, but the difference is ours are not always favorites. We've had some good returns on those. Uh, our top our A selections here, you can see, are winning 56% of races, so over half. These top plays are winning 47% of races. Um, so that's a really strong indicator and something I'm going to use very heavily here. And then our top four are winning 77% of the, of the races that they run in. So that's a huge number for us, um, and it, it shows that these top four um, are really uh, getting the job done more often than they are not. So we're going to really use that as our cutoff, and that's why you can see I went in in orange, and I kind of drew where the top four cutoff is. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to couple my handicapping with um, the handicapping of the system. Uh, that way I just get to put a little bit of nuance, especially in those maiden races, that can be very helpful. So in this race, I have the 10 as a top play. Given that our top play wins 50% of races, that's the only one I want to use. So I'm going to use, uh, let me switch colors here so that we can uh, clearly see what's going on. Let me switch over to purple. So for my A horse, I'm going to use the 10. Now I have others but I'm just going to use the 10 to keep it easy. In fact, I'm going to just change this a little bit because I think there's going to be some races where I need a little bit more room. So I'm going to put A's up here. 
and I'll put B's over on this side. So uh, my A here is just going to be the 10. I'll trust that system. Uh, we tended to agree on that. And then you can see our next selections are pretty close together. So I had 5, 2, 6, 8. The formula had 1, 6, 8, 5, and 2. I think for the purposes of this, I'm going to just go with the ones that we agreed upon. So I'm going to go uh, and just use all three of these uh, as B selections. Like I said, the formula has been pretty successful. Uh, normally, I wouldn't quite trust it just like this blindly. Um, but at Aqueduct, it, it's been one that you can actually do that. So when I'm putting together my actual double plays, I'm going to be looking to use the 10 into my A's and B's in the second leg. Uh, and then... In this case, I probably won't because it's a top play, uh, but a lot of times I'll also use my B just into the A. Um, so I never, I don't play BB unless it's a significant, um, unless it's a significant value. But otherwise, I mostly go AA, AB, and BA as my selections or as my plays. Um, this one I'm going to diverge a little bit. I'm just going to play the one entry. I like both parts of the entry, um, and you can see I said one E one. I prefer the the one over the one a but i think both of them are legitimate contenders and then we both liked uh the five and you can see they had the two and the three sort of right on that line these obviously serve as one uh entry in the betting but for me they're separate horses so i'm just gonna go one e uh and then i would use both the five um both the five and the three here is what I would do. So there I would default to my selection over over the two. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. And that's something that as the board plays, if I see that the two is a much better value than the three, I might swap those out. Always be flexible in your handicapping. Have a game plan. Um, but if you walk to the line and, and you've got a run call, a run play called, and you're running right into the blitz, uh, you know, maybe maybe make an audible change to play. Maybe it's just that you you switch the play to the other side to avoid the pressure, or maybe it's that you just call a whole new play, just scrap the whole thing. But if you have a game plan, then you at least have somewhere to adjust from. Uh, in this race, we both like the one three, and so I'm going to use those as my A selections. And then uh, we both had the two, and that's that's fine. So I'll use the two and the five. I'll keep the B selection on there. Uh, I don't like to toss Bs from. Uh, from this if I can help it, unless it's a situation like this where we're splitting hairs. Uh, in race number four, we've got the 7-2. I had the 7-2-8. So I'm going to go ahead and just, again, just kind of trust that. I'll put my 8 on the B line. And then I kind of like the 5 and the 3. They do not particularly, uh, I shouldn't say they, I, I do not particularly based on my handicapping. I think in this one, I'm just going to go 3D. I think I'm just going to go 7, 2, 8 and move on from there. Now, some of these will change based on scratches. If you haven't used our product before, I do repost in the portal um, the, the sheets once scratches have been announced. And that's not just a move our picks up one spot. That's a total re-handicapping of the entire race. So you may see big dramatic shifts depending on like if one of these entries scratches out, that could produce big changes to the race. Uh, I had 417693. They have 4176 and 9. I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper here because I do think this race is a tough one to gather. So I'm going to try and keep this line short. I'll go 417 there. But I do want to keep both the 6 and the 9. We both kind of tend to agree that that's the way to go. So I'm going to go like that there. Um, this is a situation where... I'm going to probably uh, make sure that I've got all five of these covered in uh, our in our wagers coming in and going out. And again, I'm going to be focused on the doubles today. This one, again, I've got another uh, top selection, and I've got him singled here out there. I had the eight, but I also had the seven. I'm going to go ahead and just throw the eight up there. I do think the seven needs to be included. I know they did not include it here, but I also like the three and the nine, which they do. So I'm going to replace the one with my seven because I, I really do feel like in this situation that that seven horse should be included. So we're going to go three, nine and seven as our B selections on that one. And then uh, moving on to race seven, I had seven, 10 and four. You can see that both the seven and the four are listed. So I'm going to make those my A selections, but I also see that they have the two listed as the top selection. I don't really want to leave that one out. Uh, and I also like the three. So I'm going to use the T3 selections as my A's. And then I'm going to use the 10 
as a B. I'm going to leave the one off the ticket, but I'm hopeful that because I've got the top four, that should cover 77% of the races, and then I can scoop it up with the 10, which I think from a, a handicapping perspective is the one that maybe the, the formula missed. Now, I had one, four, and two. They also did here in the formula, so I'm going to go one, two, four, and seven. I'm just going to put them all on the A line, just like they have them. That includes all my picks, so I feel good about that. And then 9-6 were my top selections. Those were theirs as well. Uh, so I'm going to go 9-6, 7, and 5. Those were my next two as well when I did my quick handicap through. I think we're going to go that deep, and I think we're just going to leave it at that. I do think the 2 and 8 are interesting horses, um, but they are definitely sort of that next level. Now, one thing that's really important to know is when I go through and do these handicapping situations, um, I do this without looking at what the, the formula spit out uh, because I don't want to be influenced by what the formula spits out uh, when I'm making my selections. I want my selections to be the subjective version, and I want to couple it with the objective version, which is the data-driven formula. Um, as you're using this, I would highly recommend that you do the same. Obviously, we're very successful at Aqueduct. Obviously, there are ways that you could piece uh, a set, you know, if you're hitting... 77% with the top four, there are ways you can very easily piece that together to make sure that it's profitable um, without doing your own handicapping, but I don't recommend that at all. I would say take a look at things, come back and use this to confirm what you know. If we have something dramatically different, hopefully you're a member, you can go in, you can look at the thing and say, okay, well, I didn't like the 10 at all. Why do they love the 10? Oh, I can see that based on their numbers, speed, stamina, class, tops. Jockey trainer, a second best rating, record at the distance, right? So you can go through and you can actually look at where they rank in the top five. You can see if they are the tops in any categories. You can look at pace scenario, all those kind of things. So it gives you a nice little cross check there. So that's how we're going to be playing, barring scratches, uh, Aqueduct on Friday. Uh, if you want to get access to our scratches, please make sure that you uh, join our members portal today. Again, just $10 gets you access for 30 days uh, from your, your first date of access. So um, get in there, get access to this we not only have aqueduct today um, but other tracks that we have include uh, aqueduct fairgrounds Gulfstream park oaklawn park uh, remington and tampa and remington we've had an absolutely phenomenal uh, couple of days here uh, you can see we've just started at remington this is our first week there but if I uh, go in and pull up my stat numbers for that, you can see that at Remington Park, we are hitting 64% uh, with our A winners, which is one of the top tracks that we have. 47% with our top selections. 94% of winners have been in our top four at Remington. Uh, and then our top plays are winning at exactly one third. So um, that's definitely worth the price of your... Um, of your free trial right there uh, is getting access to those Remington Park picks for tonight's Springboard Mile. So uh, whether it be Oaklawn Park, Remington Park, Gulfstream Park, no matter what park you're playing, or whether it be in Naira at the Big A, I wish you the best of luck. Um, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, like and subscribe here on YouTube, and become a member today. Cash those tickets.